Hi, I'm Ian Porlupi, and welcome back to the woodshed that is right outside the Northland workshop. And once again, we're going to work on a project that is perfect if you are beginning woodworking. We've set up the corner of this shed as a makeshift workshop, and we've outfitted it with some basic tools, and last time we even made a little oil stone box so that way we could keep the tools sharp. Now what we need to do is build a cabinet to house the tools in. The Woodshed Adventure Series is all about doing woodworking projects with minimal tools in minimal space. So that way if you don't have a full blown workshop, you don't have to worry. You can still have fun woodworking no matter where you are and no matter what tools you have available to you. So we're going with minimal tools. But the tools we do have, we want to make sure they're well taken care of. And part of taking care of tools is making sure they have a place to live that will keep them out of harm's way. So today we're going to build this tool cabinet. Now this tool cabinet is based off an old Stanley design that you used to be able to buy in the 20s and 30s that would come outfitted with tools. You buy the box, you hang it on the wall, you open it up, and you're ready to start woodworking. They don't have those anymore, so we're going to make our version of one of those. The key to this project is I want it to be an accessible project that can also hold up well over time. What I mean by that is it doesn't have any fancy joinery. If you look, we have the bottom and the side of the cabinet or in this case the door, joined with a rabbit joint that is then reinforced with these stepped miller dowels. So we can cut a rabbit and then we can drill some holes with the cordless drill. Not a big deal. So that's really the construction that's used again and again. Just like the case and door construction, this little removable drawer is also joined with rabbits, and reinforced with dowels. The shelf that is the place for the planes is a stop dado that is once again reinforced with dowels. So that's the recurring theme of this project. We're going to get really good at cutting rabbits and dados and then drilling holes with the cordless drill and driving in some dowels. First thing I want to do is rough cut these boards to their proper length. And the finished size is going to be 30 inches, so I'm going to cross cut them at 31 inches. What that'll do is give me plenty of room to square up the edges a little bit later once I plane these edges flat. I'm planing one edge of each board flat and square to the face. I'm going to use this edge as a reference when I mark for the width of the board. And I want to make sure that I take my time and get these edges as perfectly square as I can possibly get them because the whole project is riding on the accuracy that we can mill these parts. So I want to take my time, check it in multiple locations with a square, and make any fine-tuned adjustments if they're needed. But that looks pretty good, so I'm going to set this one aside. I have the trued edge along the front of the workpiece, and I'm ready to lay out for the final dimension, which in this case is 30 inches. And you'll notice I'm not using a pencil at this point, I'm actually using a knife because the knife is going to sever the fibers which is going to come in handy when we plane it smooth. With the length marked, I want to make sure that I reference the square against the true edge, not the other edge, because that may or may not be parallel to this edge at this point. So I make sure the knife can go in the mark so 
So with the knife lined up with the knife mark, I'm going to hold the blade of the square and I'm pushing on it slightly to make sure the body of the square stays tight up against the reference edge. I'm going to lightly score the workpiece. I'm going to come back, score it again, come back with a little more pressure, score it again. Each time pressing down on the knife just a little bit more. I don't want to push down too hard to start with because it's easy for the knife to wander and actually push the square out of position. Now this square isn't long enough to go across this board. It would be tempting to flip it around and mark it like this. And I was able to do that with the pencil for the rough cut because that was just a guide. It was okay if it bowed in slightly or bowed out slightly, but because I don't know if this edge is true, I don't want to reference off of that for something as exact as this final cut. I'm going to go ahead and take this other straight edge and put that up against the knife line. I actually put the blade in there so the straight edge references off of it. Once I'm happy with that, I'm going to go ahead and push down on the straight edge and lightly continue that line along. There. Now I just double check with the straight edge that it's straight across, and it is, so I'm happy with that. Obviously, the easiest thing to do would be to have a big enough square that you can scribe the line across in one fell swoop, but if you don't happen to have a square that big, you can always do it with this two-step process. I'm sawing away the bulk of the material, staying a sixteenth of an inch away from that knife line. I'm going to go ahead and plane down to the knife line. This way I'm guaranteed to have a straight cut in all directions because I have the knife line all the way around. There's two things I want to watch out for doing this. One, that I don't go all the way out the end because that's going to break off a big chunk and that'll be unsightly. The other thing is, is I want to make sure I don't get overzealous with the planing and cruise right past the knife line. I'll flip it around. And finish it up from this side. down to the knife line here. Now I can go ahead and clean up the middle. Now I'm ripping all the pieces to width, staying about a sixteenth of an inch away from the line, because again, I'll plane this down to be straight and square once I'm all done with all the ripping. I now want to true up this ripped edge, but I also want to make sure both sides are the exact same width. So what I'm going to do is rest these two sides in the workmate on the metal support rails, clamp it together, and what this does is it assures me that this bottom edge is flush with one another. Now when I plane both of these at the same time, I'll get matching sides. And once again, a little bit of wax on the bottom of the plane just to make it slide a little smoother. Now I see I have a high spot right here, so... I'm going to focus on that for a second, see if I can get that 
down. Just like that. Now what I'm doing is looking at the pencil line to make sure I don't go too far. The other thing I want to do is just double check that these edges are square. I'm going to be using rabbit joints to join the top and bottom to the sides of the tool chest. And to lay out the rabbit joints, I'm taking, in this case it's the top, and I'm setting it so it's flush with the top edge of one of the sides. I'm taking my combination square, putting it right there. And I'm double checking that it's flush, and it is. With that in place, I can go ahead inscribe a line with the knife. Once again my little combination square isn't quite long enough so I'm going to use a straight edge to complete the knife cut. I've set my router plane to an eighth of an inch and that's what this rabbit's going to be for a depth so I'm using the router plane right now as a marking gauge to lay out the depth of cut. I'm going to use the same setting on all the rabbits and the dado that has the little drawer divider. So I'm not going to move the position of this cutter until I'm all done. I'm going to use a chisel just to make a shoulder where that knife cut is. And this is going to allow me a guide for when I start sawing the shoulder. Now it's time to saw the shoulder and this is where that little V that I cut with the chisel really comes in. I want to start at the far side and gradually drop the saw down making sure I'm on the waist side of the knife cut. Once I've got it established all the way along, now I can look at both sides and saw down to the eighth inch depth. With the shoulder cut, I'm going to come in with my one inch chisel and see if I can pop some of the waste out. I can clean it up the rest of the way with the router plane. There's a shelf in the back part of the tool chest and I want to lay that out right now. So what I did is I first decided what was going to be the front edge of the tool chest and I made a cabinet makers triangle to tell me that this is the top and that these two are the inside although I could figure that out from the rabbits. Now what I want to do is make sure everything is even and I've decided that I want this shelf up four and a half inches and instead of using my pencil I'm going to go ahead and make a tick mark with my knife. I'm going to go ahead do the exact same thing on this side making sure that they line up that way I know it's going to be correct. This is a half inch wide shelf and it might be tempting to lay it out on both sides right now but I don't want to do that. I want to work on one edge at a time and then actually fit the shelf to this dado. So I'll use the blade of my knife to line up that little tick mark, start at the four and a half inch spot, 
and just start scoring a line. I've turned the plastic bench dogs the other way because I'm now using it as a planing stop because I'm going to start chiseling out the waste on this edge. Now you'll notice I flipped this thing around. That's because I'm right-handed so I find it a whole lot easier to chisel in this direction. I'm going to come back with my knife and score along this edge a couple more times to deepen the cut. Now I'll start a little farther back and chisel out the waste again. I've got this edge well established so I'm going to go ahead and take the actual piece I'm going to use as the shelf and lean that in there so it actually catches on the edge of the dado. With it like that, I can go ahead and score a line right along it. Now this is going to give me a dado that is the exact width of this shelf. And if this end isn't quite the same width as this end, it's not going to fit. So I mark this with an A, and I mark that with an A, so I know it goes in this way. Now you might notice that I haven't made any attempt to clean up this front edge. And I'm not going to do that until this is fully installed. And then I'll plane it flush with the front edge and that'll make more sense when we get to that step. So just don't worry about this at this point. With that light score mark established, I can come back in with my combination square. And if everything is going well, I should be able to line it right up with that score line like that. And it should line up, showing me that it's square. Now I can go ahead and deepen that score line. I've spun the workpiece around again so I can chisel out this side in the same manner. I'm using my 5 16 chisel to pare away the stuff left in the middle. I'm going to get it down closer to the final depth before I use the router plane. I'm going to have to be very careful with the router plane because the blade of the router plane is a half inch wide and this dado is a half inch wide so I really don't have any wiggle room or else I risk tearing out the outer edge. And that completes the notch that will accept the stop dado on the shelf. The shelf is going to get held in place with some special dowels once this whole thing's assembled the easiest time to pre-drill the holes is right now. This way I know exactly where to drill the larger hole from the outside in. and the dados, I can go ahead and start assembling the tool chest. Now it's time to drill the tapered hole.
the panel that's going to become the front of the tool chest and I want to make sure that I plane the inside smooth one last time before I attach it because this is the easiest it's going to get to smooth up the front. The last thing I did before I left yesterday was to glue and screw this back panel to the case. Yes, I said I glued and screwed the back panel to the case. And what some of you will no doubt notice is that there's a cross grain situation right here. What that means is the grain of the piece of wood that is 15 inches wide for the back of the case is going in this direction. The top and the bottom and the shelf on the case have grain going this way. So it comes at 90 degrees to the grain on this board. Normally, you don't want to rigidly attach those two types of grain configurations together because the wood is going to try to expand and contract this way with changes in humidity way more than this is going to expand and contract this way. What that means is if this thing dries out in the future and it tries to contract but this rigid connection won't allow it to contract, it could split somewhere right down the grain. Or if it tries to expand in the future, if this connection isn't rigid enough, it could try to blow out these joints right here. Well, why did I do it? Because the issue I see is this is going to be loaded up with heavy tools. This back is what's going to attach it to the wall. So if this isn't firmly attached to the case, eventually the case is going to pull away from the back and the tools are going to drop. I'm deciding for me the lesser of two evils is someday possibly having this thing crack versus having a whole bunch of tools land on the floor. So that is the risk I'm taking here with this cross grain situation. The other thing is this is a piece of shop furniture. If it gets a split in it someday, it's not the end of the world. It already has giant knots and a knot hole down here. So a crack isn't going to make me lose any sleep. The biggest difference between attaching the front and the back to the case is the back was attached with drywall screws, the front's getting attached with more of these tapered dowels. I'm in the process of separating the door from the case, and to do that I'm using my little dovetail saw and a straight edge. The straight edge does two things. It makes it so I cut in a straight line, but also this edge is perfectly 90 degrees to the side of the cabinet. So as long as I keep the blade of the saw pushed up against the straight edge, I know that the cut will be 90 degrees. And I just work my way back slowly. The other thing I did before I put the straight edge on here was I actually took all three hinges that are going on this side and I laid them out and I drilled all the pilot holes. It's a lot easier to lay out the locations for the hinges and get them all lined up before you cut the door out than when this thing's in two pieces. Now I can go ahead and plane the little shelf flush with the saw cut. I've attached cabinet hangers to the back of the tool cabinet. And I'm going to hang them on two and a half inch long deck screws. Just like that. It's time to think about the tool holders. 
And really, this is going to come down to what tools do you have and which tools do you think you'll have in the future. So, my tool holders might not be exactly like your tool holders. But, hopefully, if we go through a couple of these things, it'll give you a rough idea that you can customize to your own setup. First thing I want to take a look at is this rail right here. As you can see, this is just a piece of wood with a series of half inch holes drilled in it. I found the half inch was the perfect size to keep the chisels from falling out. And I wanted to make sure that it was being held by the socket of the chisel, not by the wooden handle. So that way if the wood dries out over time, the metal doesn't drop out. It worked okay up through three eighths of an inch. After that, I had to start cutting a slot in each one so that way the blade of the chisel could fit through. I still want the half inch hole so that way it'll stay centered. Finally, I went back to the half inch hole for the screwdriver and a quarter inch hole for the scratch all. Behind these two, you can see I cut a notch and that is what holds my panel saw in place. So that slides right down in there and there's enough flex in the blade that I can curve the saw to lift it out and set it in. The first thing I did is lay out where the chisels need to go, where the notch for the saw blade is going to go, and where the scratch all and the screwdriver are going to go. Now that I have them all laid out, I want to start with a half inch auger bit to drill out the holes for the chisels. Now I'll go a little ways and check and once the drive center just pokes through I'll stop because what I'll do is drill all of them from this side, flip it over and finish the hole from the other side. That way, I eliminate the chance for tear out. The hole isn't enough to actually fit the blade in. So what I did was lay out a slot on either side of the hole to accept the blade. And if I show you with the one inch chisel, the blade fits in like that, and then the hole holds the socket so it's centered. And that way, it won't fall out when I open and close the door. To do that, I'm going to use a quarter inch chisel and simply chop away at it. Now this Douglas fir is not the friendliest stuff to chopping with the chisel so it splinters a little bit but it's just a tool holder after all so I think it'll be okay. Now I'll go part way from the top, flip it over and chop from the bottom and I'll just gradually work up to the line on all three sides. At this point I want to make sure that this piece is square to the sides and up enough from the bottom of the door that the longest chisel I have, in this case the three quarter inch chisel, isn't going to bottom out. Now I don't know how long this chisel was new so I'm leaving about an inch under it so that way if I ever happen to get a chisel that's larger than this one, it won't bottom out either. With the chisel rack taken care of, I want to turn my attention to these holders that hold the mallet, the hammer, and the bit brace. They're pretty simple. All they are are a block of wood with holes drilled in it that match the size dowel that I happen to have. And this was a 7 16 dowel, but really any good sized dowel will work for this. And then I glued them in the hole. After that was dried, I went ahead and glued that to the cabinet back where I thought the tool would work the best. The easiest way to store my little dovetail saw was to simply drill a quarter inch hole in the saw plate and attach a little block with a finish nail right there and now it simply hangs in place and the hole doesn't affect it at all in its function. Likewise the router plane holder couldn't be any simpler it's just a drywall screw and it holds it perfectly fine. The combination square and sliding T-bevel are both hung on a finish nail.
The drawer was constructed like the rest of the case, with rabbited construction held together with more of the tapered dowels. I'm going to finish this tool cabinet using this bullseye amber shellac. And one thing to realize with this stuff is it is very thick coming out of the can. So thick that I really don't think it's going to work real well if I try to brush this on the wood. So what I'm going to do now that I've mixed it up is take this glass jar and while well, seeing how big of a mess I can make pour about half a jars full in. Now I want to go ahead and fill up the jar the rest of the way with denatured alcohol. What this will do is cut the strength of this shellac in half. And from everything I've read online, this stuff is a three pound cut when it comes out of the can. So by diluting it with denatured alcohol by an equal amount, it is now down to a one and a half pound cut, which is a lot easier to brush. It won't cling as much as if it was the three pound cut. I want to start on the inside of the drawer because that way I can hold on to the outside of the drawer to keep it from moving. And this first coat is going to go on and pretty much just sink right in. And that's okay because at this point it's sealing all the wood fibers. This is an alcohol based finish so it won't raise the grain as much as a water based finish but it's still going to raise the grain a little bit. So after this first coat dries I'm going to come back with some 220 grit sandpaper and just lightly sand it to get rid of any of the raised grain before I continue on with the second and third coat. going to work out great and I really hope that you consider building one of these wall hung tool chests for your workshop no matter what size your shop is.